So the, the very first one that I was very curious to see uh, that's going to be presented in the ASCO is that, as you know, there had been a large scale of CDK46 inhibitor um, studies, including, you know, the three different kind of three musketeers of three um, CDK46 inhibitor, including Wybociclib, Pavlociclib, and the Abemaciclib. And one of the good news that I, I heard is that in many of the Mona Lisa studies where the Pavlociclib based study that we have been learning more and more about, what are the key secret biomarkers either for predicting the responders or the emerging resistance? For example, that we had some data that the PIK3CA was one of the common imitated um, discovered in plasma using the CTDNA platform. And yet depends on the which subtype or the which type of the PIK3CA may may not correlate with the response to the CDK46 inhibitor. And then there was a lot of discussion about the ESIR1 mutations and causing either resistance or sensitivity to the uh, CDK46 inhibitor. And yet that connection has not been yet fully discovered. So I think the uh, Dr. Fabrice Andre and his group is going to analyze and, you know, um, report out the pooled circulating tumor DNA analysis from the Mona Lisa study that was done from the phase three uh, in ABC trials. You know, so um, of course I have not had a chance to look into uh, the details of the data or I'm sure he has the data that he's gonna actually show us some more details that to me, um, I've been interested in liquid biopsy because you know, this is very critical in less invasive monitoring truly intervene when we have an opportunity before cancer actually continue to mutate and progress. So this is one of the exciting studies that I've been looking forward to um, hear about. So that's one. And then actually there's a couple more that I also was interested. Um, so the other one that I've been uh, interested is that it's sort of in the same line of the study that, um, so a lot of things that we've been learning is that, you know, as you know, the estrogen receptor positive metastatic or advanced cancer is still the major. Uh, when I talk to my patients, they would always tell you, uh, because there's a lot of us exist and we live longer than some of the other cancer patients, we tend to kind of be pushed away and say, you know, you're not the major areas of focus for our research. You're already doing well. What's the point? However, one of the things that almost like a paradigm shifting for our breast cancer patient and the learning that we obtained from this type of, you know, the long longevity of prolonged response in one therapeutic such as CDK46 inhibitor is that, you know, despite all of this success as a whole, there are still patients that they have a very, a lot of different heterogeneity within their tumor. And yet we don't really understand about the heterogeneity. So like, for example, like over the years, we have um, developed the idea that triple negative breast cancer is what's not and uh, instead of what is and therefore it is a group of heterogeneous, uh, heterogeneous subtype of tumor and by understanding their biomarkers and secrets and how they survive maybe we can target them better so there's a lot of movements that's going on which is another part of study that you know ASCO is going to have a lot of posters on and yet this luminal cancer uh, or the hormone receptor positive cancers even though there are subpopulation of the patients who do poorly as you know as poor as triple negative breast cancer patient and yet that aspect of how this resistance and you know emerging mutations and the cooperative pathway that's going to confer the resistance have yet to be understood so if you look at the list of the um the abstracts and poster that's going to be discussed within the um the ASCO this year uh, there is a study review, the Alpalicid plus Fulvastran, with the PIK3CA mutation um, carrier of the hormone receptor positive uh, breast cancer, and HER2 negative, of course. And then, you know, these are the patients who has been exposed to the CDK46 inhibitor. And I don't know how much of the study, like it's called Bileaf, you know, um, because of the, the BYL is the original name of the Alpalicid. Uh, I don't know how much the data that we're going to learn from it, but my perspective of having so much interest in, in this study is that even though we know so much about the PIK3CA mutations in the ER positive and being a subpopulation that consists of 40% or so patients, and yet we still don't, know, don't really have a true understanding 
like who's going to be the one that was going to respond what's the relationship after patient had progressed in the cdk 46 inhibitor so that's another study in the same line that i have been interested in, and i would love to see what's the actual outcome is um, because you know i'm from mm-hmm. md anderson and i represent my md anderson investigator <laughs> there's a lot of study that we are gonna have a short uh, presentation to kind of expose what we have learned about that heterogeneous group of triple negative breast cancer. So there is a platform that we created called Artemis. Um, I can never remember what's the kind of like the acronym of those, but basically what we're trying to do is we profile their tumor at the beginning with anybody with the triple negative breast cancer. Then we kind of give them standard azuromycin and cyclophosphamide. We profile them again at the end of the AC. If you don't have optimal response, we determine as 70% or more by ultrasound, then based on the profile that we did at the beginning or the after the treatment, we allocate them into the different targeted therapy. So there will be a lot of posters and discussions that's going to come around uh, around the Artemis. And so um, if you have some time and interest about the triple negative breast cancer, please come and visit. You know, And then actually, as a kind of small addition, I think the Azure study, uh, you know, the NSABPB, 34, that's like the, you know, who's going to benefit from the adjuvant bisphosphonate, you know, like you, you remember a couple of years ago or even longer for a long time, the adjuvant bisphosphonate has been that point of discussion that do we need to give it to everybody? Do we need to give it to older patients with the osteoporosis risk? And what are going to be the benefit? Who's going to benefit? So I think there is a poster about that, you know, that who might be the uh, patient who's going to benefit from the adjuvant bisphosphonate. So something I, I, I personally was interested. Uh, and would like love to see like who may actually benefit.